Tomato production in a greenhouse requires plant nutrition monitoring. They require a well-drained growing medium and regular watering. Application of water is best done in the morning and evenings and through irrigation system to ensure even distribution. Brian uses the drip irrigation system that is well aligned with his tomato stems. For watering my tomatoes I've used the drip line system. Actually it's the best system as you provide water directly at where the plant is. Um, to manage your tomatoes well you should be watering regularly. So for me I do water like I skip a day and I usually come to confirm how the soil moisture is before I water again. So it depends again with the weather. Sometimes it can be too hot, so it needs more watering. Sometimes it can be chilly, then you can also regulate on that. This is uh, the drip line. I used to water my tomatoes. Um, the drip lines are spaced about, about 15 centimeters in the hole. Um, so the holes are just next. The, to the stem of the plant so as to ensure that when you water the roots, the general roots of the plant gets water. During fertilization, I usually come and dig a small hole close to the plants. This way, I drop the fertilizer, just a, a pinch of it. Then, I and then I leave it to water for some oil at least to diffuse the fertilizer to the plant. In a greenhouse production, farmers should ensure the temperature and humidity is relative to outdoor conditions. Many farmers fail to get good profits from greenhouse crops because they cannot manage these factors that determine plant growth and productivity. Ideally, Farmers should have a thermometer for measuring temperature inside the greenhouse for effective management. Optimal temperatures for production of greenhouse tomatoes should be at 15 to 30 degrees Celsius and not beyond 35 degrees Celsius. The temperatures should be maintained at around 16 to 30 degrees Celsius during the day and 13 to 18 degrees Celsius during the night. Brand elaborates how he manually controls the humidity and temperature in the greenhouse. For the temperature control, I've had uh, to, to make like windows all through. So these windows, when the temperature is too hot, I'll open up the windows so it will regulate the hot temperatures. It will cool them down. So this goes again for the case of cold temperatures. I'll have to close down my windows, that is in the evening, so as to maintain the correct temperatures for the tomatoes to thrive. Pruning must be done regularly at least once per week. If this is not done, excess leaves in tomatoes will become a burden to the growing plant. This means that the photosynthetic process will be diverted from fruit formation and hence lowering yields. When pruning, branches or suckers must be removed when they are 1 to 3 inches long. This allows for maximum air circulation and simplifies pest and disease control. This cultural practice creates a balance between plant roots and shoot functions in tomato development. Brian carries out the weeding and pruning practices very seriously. This has helped him in ensuring his plants are of good health. Generally I do hand weeding because I don't want to damage the roots of the plant. So I'll come and just pluck off or uproot the weeds as I move along. Just as simple as that. For the tomato management, you should always prune in time. So at the early stage, 
you are not supposed to prune because the leaves are the one making the food for the plant. So as it grows, it will start flowering, then fruiting. So at the stage where it has formed the fruit, and the fruit is uh, like almost mature, you now start pruning. As you cannot, the fruits are also green in color, so they, they sure make their own food too. Um, so basically, that's how you manage in terms of pruning. You don't allow for two circus heads to grow. That is to ensure that the plant grows to that level, whereby you'll come again and start laying your plants. So as it continues growing, you continue reaping from it. Pruning is simple. Using a pruning scissors, you just get to a plant one by one. So you just check on the leaves that are not that are not functioning anymore, you cut off. I prone to increase production and to maintain the general growth of the plant and to reduce the leaves so as to maintain a cool balance of fresh air and temperatures in the greenhouse. You also prune, you prune the fruits which are small so as to ensure that the fruits that have matured grow to a big size for the market. There are pests and diseases that attack the tomato plants inside a greenhouse. These include moths, cutworms, aphids, nematodes, mites, and the red spider. To control these challenges, a farmer should spray the tomatoes with insecticides. Aside from using inorganic pesticides, Brian has done research and implemented a system where he's able to organically control the pests on his farm. He elaborates more on the techniques that he uses. I know you're wondering why I've intercropped my tomatoes with the uh, spring onions. Um, generally, I can find out that spring onions produce a certain scent which is repellent to insects. So it also helps me maintain um, it's a free environment for my tomatoes. Yeah, so generally I planted this, like I'm planning to split them and add them to the other spaces. Just like any other business venture, there are several challenges that a tomato greenhouse farmer is likely to experience. Some of these challenges are pests and diseases such as blight, aphids and nematodes, use of uncertified seeds and lack of knowledge and information on greenhouse farming. Bran has experienced some of these challenges. He tells of his shortcomings. Some of the challenges you can face with tomatoes are the wilt, the, the fusarium wilt and the bacterial wilt, which is very devastating as it can, it can clear all your plants in a greenhouse. I've managed to find out that uh, thrives well in acidic soil and this is caused probably with the fertilizer. So after some time you should do soil tests to know the pH of your soil so that you can be recommended the best uh, calcium or calcitic lime to use to restore the pH of your soil. Greenhouse farming reduces radiation for tomato crops to produce more efficiently. A greenhouse production produces 24 times as compared to traditional open field farming. Brand is taking sustainably one step further by ensuring that in his 30 by 7 meters greenhouse, which has 500 stems, has a production of 8 to 10 64 kg crates per week. This particular greenhouse is uh, 30 by 7 meters. I've planted 500 stems of tomatoes. Um, in such a greenhouse with 500 plants, I expect roughly about 8 crates 
per harvest. I harvest once a week. When it starts to, to ripen, it starts with the maybe two crates. Then after a while, it keeps on increasing. Tomatoes grown in a greenhouse have a shelf life of 21 days compared with those grown in an open field, which are 14 days. The plants take a period of two months after transplanting to start producing fruits. Farmers can harvest when they are either red in color or when starting to yellow. This will be determined by the market and consumer preference. Brian likes to harvest his fruits before they are fully ripened for the hotel customers and red for the local consumers. You'll know that the tomato is ready for harvest when it has turned from this deep green color to at least uh, it starts to become yellowish. At that point, you know you can harvest. You can harvest that fruit. But generally, for me, I leave it for about a week. Uh, most of it will have turned red and some will have turned to the yellow, turn yellow, which is also okay for the market. For good market value, Farmers must ensure to grade their tomatoes according to sizes. Through grading, farmers are able to meet the demand of their consumers according to their preferences. Brian grades his tomatoes immediately after harvesting. I have to grade because I have different markets for this. Uh, I'll have to check on the quality and the size of the fruit. So there are specific plants who prefer the larger, bigger fruits. So I just separate that from the rest. Then I'll also check on the quality of the fruit formation. If there is anything that's affected, it's probably its outer layer or it's damaged of some sort. I'll have to put that aside. Recently, the market for tomato has been dictated by the rate of production and seasons. Between January and March, tomatoes are in massive production, thus leading to low prices as the market is flooded. Farmers are advised to learn more on out-of-season planting to avoid flooding the market, hence low returns. Brian supplies his tomatoes directly to his local consumers and to hotels in Eldoret where one kilogram goes for 80 shillings and a crate goes for 2,400 shillings. I have a general, like, general base clients. Uh, I supply some to a, a hotel, a resort. Then others I supply to my clients, direct and, and consumers. Tomatoes are among the most highly consumed vegetables in Kenya and very easy to grow and sell. For commercial production, farmers should identify market for their produce before venturing into production. One can market the produce online through social media, directly to consumers, corporates or at farmers markets. It is advisable to have more than one greenhouse to have a steady production and a supply of tomatoes to the market. This will ensure that a farmer has a steady income all year round. Farmers interested in venturing into greenhouse farming should bear in mind that it is not a part-time job as they should be hands-on to ensure best agricultural practices are applied.